Hi everyone. Uh, bonsoir, Teddy. <laughs> Hi, Teddy. Um, yeah, it's a bit improvised. So uh, as I cannot do any video uh, at the moment, uh, I thought uh, because I'm going to be going off here and there. Um, so I thought it would be cool to do a wee update uh, for you guys, even if there's nobody there. Uh, I know there's several events. I just noticed it did coincide with two different events, one big events musically uh, on the Charismatic Voice channel. So I'm, I might not be long, uh, which I asked for this schedule. So it's, I'm sorry. Uh, Elizabeth and also there's Vin live also on Discord I think uh, non nonsense whiskey so I'm sorry if the schedule is not very good but merci beaucoup Romain <laughs> um, so I don't know if there's any of you there basically I'm in between two different things so uh, I wanted to explain to you where I am at. Um, Sunday, I did finalize my uh, blending, which is a blending of different casks. So it's still a single malt, even if it doesn't really taste like, a, for instance, a Scottish single malt. Uh, but this is going now to um, in a vat in a stainless steel vat, I think. And then it's gonna be um, be married in casks for several months. And then you should see this come in the fall. And this, <laughs> after eight recipes, let me, I uh, cannot show you everything, but this is it basically. So this is how it should look like, uh, even if there has been others other attempts all these are the same work on uh, on this french distillery voila voila um now um i also put a few samples on the on on, on my table uh, i received others in between i still have my french edu uh, distillery de menhir samples still have my shelter point i know i have to go live we have to find a way at some point to do this still not my connections are still not uh, solved issues are not sold uh, i think i'm gonna finish a few samples tonight uh, so this is a bit wink to new drum drinker because it was theirs as now i have noted them twice uh, then i might crack on this Whiskey Baron, uh, who was it from? I think it was Tom Whiskey Shorts, I'm not sure. Um, I have this Heaven Hill, and this is from New Dry Drinker as well, to finish. Um, this was Whiskey Shorts, uh, Oxford Rye. We'll see. And also I have two new, in fact, three, French whiskies uh, using uh, champagne yeast, so wine yeast. So we're speaking about that. Uh, some people were speaking about that. I think Roy from Aquavite. I still haven't tried or even found their Loch Lomond, the famous one with the wine yeast. Um, I have some new stuff there. Uh, I had a chance to find, so I'm not sure I'm going to open it because I haven't even made the pictures, but it's a special release um, that I only know it's ex bourbon. It's the reawakening from uh, Glen Kedam, my first Glen Kedam on board, which makes it, uh, which makes it, guys, to be more precise and please if you're there uh show up in the comments so i know who you are and i can thank you for being there which makes it uh 147 different distilleries in my collection and 91 different scottish distilleries so i'm still far from 100 
28 or 40 now, but going well. Uh, I'm not going to open this tonight either, but I still have a sample that's probably from the same batch or not far. So I might pour this maybe to start with. Uh, and of course, I have a cracker that many of you guys know, uh, que je recommande, uh, the Edrodau uh, Caledonia version. Oh, hey, Frederick. Yeah. Welcome on board. Hey, hey, Anthony, <laughs> I just show you some samples of your uh, my finished night, and there's others. Um, Frederick, if you feel like even for five minutes coming in, I can put this here. It's up to you. <laughs> uh, anything is always good. <laughs> especially from you. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Anthony, about the, the, the schedule crash. I, I improvise things as much as I can. I have a few tough days. It was a bit difficult, super busy weekend as well. Next one's going to be busy as well, so no videos. So I'm just trying to, uh, to do things. I couldn't have even go at the post, so apologies, my friend. Uh, Anthony, so your samples will come a bit later, uh, but I, I will do my best. Anyway, let's start and maybe make some people come with uh, the legend, which is a collaboration between uh, Master Blender from Suntory, uh, and I think it's uh, Fredno Jim Beam, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's finish this. Ooh, I uh, baptized this. My God. Okay. So, yeah, Legend uh, 47. No, yeah, well, <laughs> when you can. <laughs> Uh, I think the lakes must be probably better. <laughs> I'm sure regarding your your, your video, right? Um, which I have seen. Um, yeah, so... Uh, oh my God, there's also even Scotch Down Under live. This is crazy. This is uh, absolutely crazy. The three or four different live. Oh! Okay, sorry about that. No problem. Take care, Frederick. See you another time. Okay, so I, it seems my schedule is very bad <laughs> for this improvised live, but never mind. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Anthony. Cheers, Frederick. And uh, Tipacon, if you're still there. C'est pas mal. C'est pas si mal. So nice esters. Of course, there's Jim Beam bourbon, the solvent tea, corn stuff. Um, that's ahead. This we can see there's some wine cask involved on, on the second ground, not the background, but just second ground. When I tasted this, I found it this too winey for me. But it wasn't bad. I uh, um, don't remember. You can see lots of notes. The rating, but yeah, we, I'm going tonight for something relaxed. So not much tasting notes uh, in terms of scoring and stuff, but just relaxing and chatting with you guys. It's not going to be super long. Hmm. It's better than last time, I have to say. Hmm. So the oxidation that comes from the wine is sweeter, is, is softer than the, than the first time I tried it, which is interesting. Okay. 
Well, we'll see if, if in a quarter there's not many people, I'm, I'm just going to do like if I was in video. Oh, um, new releases. I'm not sure I understand this sentence. Tickle your fancy. Oh my God, it's too much English for me. Tickle your fancy. You mean that attracts me among what's out? uh if it's what you mean i'll say i've seen some the single cask releases that seem to be interesting some young ones some old ones um also what did i see i, I saw some expensive stuff <laughs> uh honestly i don't know I, i'm so much in uh, all that happened and uh, like i said i received these recently which is french distillery using champagne yeast and aging whiskey in ex uh, champagne liquor casks which is unusual completely and this one is smoked so and I, it will be my second try. And they're coming with wine corks, which is very uh, sensitive to open. And they still fit in there. Uh, so, yeah, my big problem is that I, I'm afraid I'm not going to attend Whiskey Live Paris and other big shows because of the COVID restrictions. Otherwise, uh, of course, I'm interested in, in the, because I was there and I tasted their new makes, uh, the Lindor Abbey Distillery, uh, Anthony. Um, also, uh, if we put aside French distilleries that you don't know uh, about uh, foreign distilleries, um, I have one of yours there, by the way, that I think I'm not going to take notes, but... Uh, the Cotswold, I think it's yours. I'm not super sure if it's yours or Whiskey Shorts, which was called Whiskey and Warhammer at some time. Um, I just put them out of the, so I'm not sure which one is which. Uh, but for now, I'm enjoying your legend, Anthony. And it's better than last time. Yeah, um, in fact, not only I've seen it, but I recognize the, and I apologize to Douglas Lang because I haven't tried it yet. And it's been here for several years. It's unfortunately the case of other samples. I'm sorry. Uh, Douglas Lang did uh, release several, two or three times only, pitted expressions from Myla that were called Eula. It's a bit remote, so I, I don't even know exactly where it is, but I know the area. <laughs> but if yeah, I was going to show you the sample, it's an old bow more. It's almost exactly the uh, beautiful, sexy woman that's in on this double barrel. So, yeah, my concern is are uh, they going to show some fancy design instead of showcasing the distilleries that's on the double barrels. So are they going to continue the undisclosing of the two distilleries? Or are they going to add the distilleries under this beautiful design? <laughs> no, it's too, it's too complicated now. I'm sorry. I show you another time, I promise. I must have the picture somewhere, Anthony. Um, yeah, I haven't tried this one because Gary, I have to say, it's the most expensive one, I think, from there uh, with the bare barley. And I saw these almost five or seven years ago. They were 500 euros already. So ugh, I cannot reach this, especially the fact it's undisclosed. <laughs> no problem. Uh, but yeah, Couvreur, there's some nice thing. There's others that for me are too much. Uh, pushed into the melting of the flavors, a bit like 
some cognacs. So it's nice, but you don't even know what you're tasting, which distillery, sometimes even which area. But it's beautiful. There's some things that are beautiful. I haven't tried any new material yet. I saw the uh, the bottles in my local super supermarket, but I didn't like the fact it's yeah you see so it's it's not cheap. I didn't like the fact that for the new releases that were affordable, there's almost no information, except you guess it's from Scotland. That's all that says. You don't know the cask type. You don't know the area from Scotland. You don't even know uh, first fill, refill. You know nothing. So I don't like that. I think it's not super cool. So uh, I, I just pass by until I have the chance to try them. Uh, for people watching, thanks for the new people coming in. Like I said in the beginning, I'm between two times. And I'm not going to be uh, doing any videos these days because I I'm going to be busy with family uh, following weekend. And I've been busy last week uh, finalizing this, which will be released in the fall, and which is a blend that I created uh, in... Uh, oh, could be interesting. If it's good, it's good, uh, honestly, Gary. It's just I have no idea, because uh, this is not the kind of things they are uh, giving to retailers to make their customers try it. So what can I do? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, and I'm go not going to buy. Uh, I don't have uh, that money. I could if I wanted to uh, wait for long months to spend that. But I will never do that in something I have no idea what's uh, about. The only thing recently, like I said in the beginning, I've tempted because I have no Glencadams. And I saw this bottle that was on offer in a place which I don't usually go and thanks to Teddy KGB because I got a ball blair as well waiting for me and I'm gonna do a super big uh, ball blair rundown later on this year but I found this reawakening and I was too tempted so uh, you will hear about this soon once again sorry if I repeat myself but I also had a big bargain on this one uh, and I still have Ibans, thanks. Yes, it was a gift, generous gift with other stuff. Uh, of the 18 of another batch, but it's 2000. I think it's 2018 or 19. Uh, things like that. And I'm now enjoying a bit more than first time, for those coming in now, the legend, which is a bourbon finished with some wine cask and a collaboration within the Japanese company Suntory with uh, Jim Beam. Hi, Donna Pass, good to see you. Lots of live tonight, live show, so I'm not going to be super long. Uh, just wanted to do a... I didn't have time to plan a video, as I'm not going to be uh, available this weekend. It's going to be two or three weeks with no videos. So I said, let's do a kind of impromptu live. Pour les spectateurs français, vous pouvez venir aussi. Vous êtes les bienvenus. Hey, hi, how are you doing? Good to see you there. Uh, molasses. Yeah, I'm just doing a, an impro, uh, like I said, because I'm not going to be super available uh, soon. It's not going to be super long unless somebody pops in. Uh, let's again put this uh we'll see i don't know who's coming and on what for etc there's lots of life tonight so i, I don't want to crush too much into them uh and i'm gonna attend to others i'm probably gonna go to scotch down under maybe be his guest i don't know uh we got along well lately uh australian channel which is uh we've had a, a, a big laugh uh, uh, recently, um, and he's live almost all the time. It's crazy. Five hours, six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. It's, it's insane. But, uh, Ken is very cool. So please check out Scotch Down Under. 
Uh, also, if you're into music, uh, and I forgot completely, apologies again to Elizabeth, uh, one of the most interesting uh, analysis of music channels, the charismatic voice uh, for which I subscribe. Uh, so I might switch from one to the others. Um, oh, Eric, hmm, which ones? Tell us. Uh, I'm interested. Well, I, now there are going to be some restrictions in sending samples abroad for us uh, French and Europeans. So I'm not even going to try to... Uh... Oh, bon appétit. Yeah, you must be in the US saying that, time-wise. So yeah, tell us more, uh, Donna Pass, which, uh, if you feel like, which kind of... Uh, which. Which ones did you have? I'm interested. So I'm finishing this legend. Maybe gonna switch to a uh, bimber. It's nice. I have the solventy touch from the bourbons, the Jim Beam bourbons. It's a bit sweetened by the red wine, but not so much. And once again, now I will have to shut up <laughs> uh, about red wine finishes and casking because I'm, I'm into it now. So <laughs> when I learned I was going to blend red wine cask, I, I, was, I was surprised. But honestly, some of them are interesting. So never say never. Okay. It's the only thing I have from Bimber. It's the second release, and it's one from Anthony, New Drum Drinker. So thanks, Anthony, again. It's not my favorite. The problem is that the first release was stellar, in my opinion, and a bit and a bit tricky because the casks were exceptional. So maybe already the, the distillery character was hidden. I don't know. It's a guess, but the result was so good that I loved it a lot. Uh, but this one for me is a bit too oaky and spicy to my taste. Okay. Oh, well, like I said, my first Glen Kadam, I won't open it tonight, but of course you will hear about it. Uh, I heard that the 21 was one of the best. Uh, the Scorch, I'm not super excited about it, honestly. Too much char. They already did it with the Alligator, so what's the point? Kulla 25, hit or miss in my opinion, if it's an official. Uh, and expensive. Then the Buna Moin Bordeaux, it's ones I, ha I have never tried, so I cannot tell. But seems you have a nice flight here. Hi, Jim. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna bimberize. <laughs> Probably the only time you're gonna miss see me that, uh, unless I have the occasion to try one that I could find interesting. Okay, it's samples kill, not bottle kill tonight, but samples kill. Why not? I'm not gonna drink all this. You have to drink responsibly, as always. So this bimber, I tried already two times. I rated something around 81. So almost, if I'm not mistaken, 13 points less. 94, I think, was probably the first release. So might be more genuine. I mean, genuinely bimberish. But for me, there's a bit too much oak and spices uh, of, compared to what I expect from a, a new distillery to really dig in into the, the distillery character. I might revise my opinion if I try the new make someday. I don't know. But at, at the, the speed it goes with the prices and the hype and all that, I, I'm not in there. I'm not going to even try. If I have the opportunity to try, I'll be happy because these guys are doing craft work. It's always respectable. But I'm gonna, not going to rush uh, after it, like for 
uh, Daft Mill or uh, Daft Mill has a serious reputation, mind you, and uh, other distilleries that are a lot in the hype. Uh, let me check a message. Okay, what's this? I don't know. Uh, they say I have something waiting for me, but I, it can be uh, it can be a fake one. We have a lot of fake messages at the moment. Um, oh, so sorry, I missed your message, Donna Bass. Yeah, of course, especially the Subway uh, series. This is nice packaging. This is a fancy idea. I, I've been into London's tube. It's, it's, it's super cool. But, of course, it's too much whiskey. It's like for Chichibu. I refuse to put a 150 or 70 into something that's three, four, five years old. Except it's a super exceptional, and I tried it before. Uh, but I will do this effort, and not always. This is better. If you got things at good price, and you're lucky, and you're happy with it, fine. Fair enough. All I want is people to be happy. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be jealous or, uh, you know, discarding a distillery, because it's, it's just, if it's good for you, fine. This one is not bad, by the way. It's just that some aspects of it are not uh, my liking. But I know it's the majority's liking. The Richard for a second release seemed to be very popular. Uh, I tried one, uh, the sample is over, and again, it's whiskey shorts. It was the Southport 59.3. Uh, release of last year, I think. It was nice, but even more oaky than this. So, be, because the ABV was higher also, of course. Yeah, exactly, Donna Bass. It's a lot of oak, come on. It's a lot of oak. It's also, it's a bit like, um, I don't know. Yeah, okay, I got it. There is the oak and spice, but also there is some buttery vanilla fudge stuff, which, okay, is, is appealing. It's nice. Now, does it come from the distillery character or from the recharring? That's my problem. I don't know. I cannot judge this. At the end of the day, this one for me is coming too much in the bourbon's territory. Um, this is debatable. This is, I'm just saying my thoughts there. This is absolutely not a bad whiskey. It's not what I'm saying. It's just that I'm, I cannot be super satisfied. And again, I'm talking about this. Uh, I still struggle a bit with this. Let's put a few drops. You have something in your glass, by the way, guys, tell me. Now it's true that the cinnamon, the cinnamon cloves and nutmeg combo is beautiful in there. Now, is that what I, I think the problem is I've been too, so much impressed and dazzled by the first release. Um, bearing in mind the first release was a three years old matured in 20, as I was told in the stand in Whiskey Live Paris, in 20 x 20 and 30 years old Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. So absolutely rare and stunning casks. 
that probably would be honestly uh, paying justice to almost any distillate unless it is flowed. I'm sorry to say that, but but Bimber had the uh, intelligence or smartness to use these. Uh, the prom problem there is the expectations that people like me, sorry, I'm gonna, gonna expect from the next release if it's not as stellar. Oof, that's expensive. Yeah. My God. Well, if, if you enjoyed it and you had this money and it's going to deprive you of another bottle you were looking for, fine, fair enough. That's, you know, this is difficult to do this balance. Ooh. Wow, very interesting, Jim. Uh, and w which was your favorite? I, I take those three are very different on the paper. I haven't tried any of them. I have to say they're both intriguing me. I will discard on the paper the Highland Park because of its price already. Then the, the McMyra Grante, it's probably one of the, mo the ones I'm the most curious of. And the blue spot as well, because I love the yellow spot and now I prefer it to the green spot. So tell us, Jim, what you think is most interesting. Okay. Oh, interesting. But did you have any um, of the blue, uh, red spot, yellow spot, and green spot before to do a comparison? Uh, same for McMyra. Uh, did you try a lot of McMyra before? Is the tea overpowering the palette? All this kind of question I'm, I'm asking maybe too much, but. Hmm. Hi, Welsh Toro, good to see you there. I'm improvising a live because I'm not gonna be able to do videos uh, next week. And also last week I was working for you guys for the fall and my blend. All these you can see, there are eight versions of, uh, and I, I'm, it's frustrating guys, because I, I, I'm not allowed, but I could show you the packaging and everything <laughs> because No, I cannot even show you that. Um, but yeah, now it's on the hands of the, uh, of the master brewer and master distiller. Uh, we have a great dialogue with him and he's now uh, just applying my recipe. And he's going to draw from the cask, the five cask. Finally, it's not six, but five. I've been discarding a cask lately because I think it was a bit uh, problematic uh the, there was a little flow so the guy is gonna blend all these in in a, in a stainless steel uh vatting vessel and then is gonna put them back into the cask for further marrying yeah it's not my whiskey in the sense i haven't distilled it but i have uh picked it in the dis in a french distillery yes uh, myself in May, and it's a project running from 2019, but because of COVID and other things, I, I had to postpone it. And it's one of the projects I have with a French distillery, craft brewery and distillery. Um, all I can tell you right now is that uh, it is um, five casks gathered together, uh, local barley, um, there are two different cask types involved uh, because in French, in France, we have the right to use other casks than oak. And there's uh, five oak cask and one acacia cask. So it's something different. Uh, 
and two different types of uh, previous content. I'm not going to say too much now. Um, also, I can tell you it's non-chill filtered. Uh, it's uh, very sweetly filtered, not under zero. Uh, and it's non-colored and it's local barley. And I'm going to, I've been fighting to make it as high as possible ABV wise. Uh, but because it's expensive, etc., it's a limited release. Uh, it's a craft company. It's going to be uh, probably reduced to 48% ABV instead of 55, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited because it's the first time, despite it's my 71th, something like that uh, blend. Uh, it's not a home blend. It's a distillery blend. <laughs> so I've been there. I've been selecting the casks. Uh, I've been bringing back uh, eight, eight samples, finally doing a bit of a narrowing. And now there's more, there's only five because I had to be very picky to uh, have a certain profile I'm searching for. Yeah, so thanks. Thanks a lot, guys, for your encouragement. And I'm really chuffed that some famous master blenders uh, are following me in this and communicating with me uh, on, I won't say too much, but on private mode to uh, to follow my uh, this journey. And, uh, and they're really very enthusiastic and, uh, and they want to try it. And I'm, I'm very humble about that. Yeah, that could be cool. <laughs> Why not? Everybody can do this it needs of course a few uh some experience but you you always learn something i have to say when you do that about your own whiskies but also about somebody else whiskies and I, I was glad about the first experiments i did i did surprise the uh the owner the distiller with the the barrels i picked and how i did blend them oh Hey, hi, Des. Yeah, final recipe is there. <laughs> so I cannot show you everything, but it's time to wait now. Thank you. <laughs> um, what else? I had a French whiskey from another distillery, Moutard which does champagne as well and uh, uses um, X champagne liqueur cask to do this. And it's smoky. Fumé means smoky. So I, I feel like tasting this uh, and maybe after finishing with uh, a few other scots and then I will see what the others are going, uh, are doing in their live show. Yeah, just a bit. This is a 50 CL bottle, by the way. Whoops. And this is 45% ABV. And this is all natural stuff, single cask, using a French, Eastern, East of France, Brasserie de Der. Um, and it's Moutard since 1892. And they're doing a lot of other things. Yeah, not exactly champagne barrels, but Ratafia, which is a kind of champagne liquor at 18% ABV, uh, molasses. So they, it's, a, it's a quite oxidative. Uh, I have a, I have also some of it. I asked for it to have a, a comparison point because I didn't know this liqueur. And it's almost like fino sherry. So just to let you know, it's very oxidative. Uh, maybe sweet and sour uh, is the English word for that. Um, but in some expression, it shows and it's a bit... For me, I'm a bit, it's a bit over the top for me. But in this one, it's interesting because it's, it's tamed 
uh, with the barrel influence. But still, it shows there. It's 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 uh, it's it's a complete different thing. You you cannot uh, compare it with a Scotch whiskey, honestly. So a lot of oxidations, uh, notes, sour notes. It can be off-putting. Yeah, I know you never heard of that. It, it's a local product. It's not. I don't think it's exported yet. It's a very recent release. Uh, I, I got uh, from them. But uh, they were. E. <laughs> hey, cool. I'm. I, I'm probably gonna go there after that. Uh, honestly. Uh, so thank you. And I just. Sample killed my friend <laughs> those and they were better than before uh, It's life Yeah, so now Anthony I'm trying this which is a smoky uh, French whiskey using uh, some champagne uh, Casks uh, not exactly champagne, but Champagne liqueur casks. Yeah, thanks. In fact, I did enjoy them better than when I opened them, which is weird, but... Cheers, everyone. Wow, this is different. This is less shocking on the, on the palate. Because it's it's quite like you were drinking a sher a fino sherry, or an oloroso sherry with just a bit more ABV. Doesn't really feel like a whiskey. Um, I think yes, uh, because uh, you know why, and I'm, I apologize, I can't show you because it's somewhere <laughs> in my cupboard. It's so difficult to, to uh, extract now, but I have a, um, a spring bank nine years old, uh, 12 years old, which has six years, it's not open yet, which have been matured in uh, bourbon for six years and six other years in ex Calvados cask. So, no, the, the thing which is forbidden by SWA uh, and uh, the poor Graham Cole has discovered it. It's the cider casks. It's difficult to do cider casks. It's not allowed, despite now you have tequila casks. So I did an experiment, and the SWA was not happy about that. We had a good question, of course. Lots of things going on now, changing the game. This is different. I, I, I don't know how to say it uh, else that... Uh, uh, you, Many French whiskies are different from what you know. You can find similarities with the Armorique and uh, Glen Armor, which I already talked about, which are uh, targeting more the Scotch audience. But many other things I have honestly bl tasted blind. I'm not sure you will say it's, it's whiskey. Uh, this is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we're well, sure I will uh, review it when I open it. I tried it at a friend. I liked it a lot. And then. Um, well, they had problems, yeah. Uh, but I think you still probably can find it. Then, for instance, Irish people have less issues with different cask types. I believe that's why Mark Rainier went there, by the way. And for instance, there's a Tula Mordieu, which is nice when I tried it, uh, finished in a cider cask. And I know there are very good um, Irish... What was the name of the brand? Uh, we need whiskey straight out or whiskey novice there. Uh, there's a very nice uh, Irish brand that does cider. 
Uh, forgot the name. I, I apologize. And also, of course, from Canada, from east of Canada, the French province uh, that's called Quebec that has beautiful cider and also uh, ice wine casks, which are used to finish some Canadian whiskies. So yeah, yeah. I, unfortunately, um, when I was at the distillery at Glen Murray uh, in 2018, the cider cask was in the experimental warehouse. Uh, was there. Even there was a stout finishing, uh, cask finishing, uh, which was very curious of, but we couldn't try it. Uh, so I have no idea. Uh, how it tastes like, uh, there's a few people there who are uh, hardcore fans that buy a lot of things. You can ask Calderac, for instance, in social media about a cider cask. I'm pretty sure he has almost everything <laughs> from them. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it. Oof, this is going to be hard to get rid of. Um, It's a very special taste. I should have put other other glasses on my table. Okay, water is beautiful. It really rinses everything. Um, I don't know if I shall finish something. <coughs> I'm sorry. Oxford Rye. Um, I think I'm going to go now for this, which is one of my latest purchases with a bargain, uh, Clint Scotia 18. I'm not going to open it now. I need to take pictures of it first. So I'm going to try the sample I was kindly provided by the brand and by a crazy guy in particular, which is uh, Ibn Mendigeron. So yes, it's a gift sample among others. Uh, some I've reviewed, some I didn't. Uh, this one I didn't yet, but I have notes. Mm. I have also a special sample and if new drum drinker is still there, let me know. I'm saving for you. And me, of course, but it's a very, very special sample and it's an honor. And once again, uh, yeah, okay. And once again, and it's a, it's a, it's a big thing. I'm going to say it's about my previous video about independence, etc. And this is going to be divided opinions, but I don't dividing opinions, but I don't care. At some point, and before even what you don't know, guys, many of you, and before even uh, starting my website, listen to this. I was so much involved in uh, noting things about whiskey telling people in some French forums and also year after year going into whiskey live shows, etc., and other shows, giving my opinion, always politeness, uh, sometimes liking, not liking, explaining why. That I believe I have some respect from some people, not all of the whiskey industry, enough for them, yes, to provide me free samples, but they know I'm going to tell them exactly what I feel about them. Believe me or not. So when you have this level of confidence, when you go each year and you discuss, and they know that you, I'm sorry if it's pretentious, they know I can evaluate what they do. Honestly, of course, it's a personal opinion. I'm not saying the truth, but just my opinion. And they know I can give them a decent, let's say, feedback on what they do. So yes, they are providing me sometimes things that I would never do to other people or to the newcomers in YouTube, etc. 
so it might shock you, but it is, this is the truth. And this sample, I'm not going to disclose what it is. It's a, from a closed distillery. I want to share this with people who will difficultly have an occasion to try it because it's history. And like I like I did, and uh, and they're cool enough not to disclose it. Yes, there's a very few people I uh, I wanted them to try Port Allen, for instance, and Anthony and Nikki are in there in this number because I knew first they didn't know it, and they maybe probably won't have the occasion to try it unless they come across. Some people who have a bottle or uh, the experience of that, so it's it's a kind of transmitting the um, like in the Olympic, you know, <laughs> the Olympic games. You transmit the fire, the torch, and you make people discover things that probably they won't otherwise. And also because I am interested in their feedback. So yeah, 25 years old, closed distillery, Anthony and Nikki, you want it, you are going to try at some point. <laughs> I hope you like it. And I haven't, I have tried it only once in the, in the stand, but I haven't tried uh, it on the sample. I saved it for the occasion of the gathering. Now, you know. But for now, it's just, if I may say, Clint Scotia. And uh, yeah. And if you want a clue, my friend, it's uh, unlike some people say, it's one of the old, it's probably the oldest distillery uh, from Scotland. Of course, not uh, 1494, but 1772 and demolished and triple distilled. Now, I won't tell you the, the price of the bottle because it's insane. I've seen it. Now, I'm not saying it's the best whiskey of the world. I tried on it once. Uh, but well, that might be interesting anyway. And I have others, other versions um, of it. Okay, so Glen Scotia 18, official release 46%. Doesn't say, again, I'm a bit annoyed, doesn't say it's natural color. It's 17 years old in American oak, finished in Oloroso doesn't say nowhere and it's a bit disappointing uh, if it's natural color and uh, chill filtering it doesn't say and the box i think oh it says non chill filtered good news but that, i think the color there's some color added Yeah, non-chill filtered, but probably some color added. Oh, come on, you're worth of any, any drum here, and you know that already, Anthony. And again, it's not a question of uh, size of channel or anything. It's person to person. It's how I feel you guys are, uh, and, and, and vice versa. OK, cheers, everyone. Hmm. Very subtle, not spectacular, not stellar. There's a bourbon influence. There's some slight mintiness, some sweet spices. Ginger, not really nutmeg. Maybe some white pepper. There's some herbal and floral subdued notes. 
Mm. It's hard to, to concentrate with headphones and a fan on the background. Maybe some trickle, um, very gentle oak. This is beautiful. I hope uh, I have a batch from, um, I think it, uh, December 20 of uh, uh, 2018. So I hope it's a good one. I saw on whiskey base there's some that are not super good, too spicy, not super well made. I really hope it's good. I had a minus 30% bargain on this. So when I saw it on the supermarket, I don't usually go um, because I have a bottle to, to get for a long time from a friend here who was there earlier on about Blair. Uh, to make my soon my ball player run down. So I I went. There was a problem. It, it's the way it goes. There was a problem in the subway. It was uh, stopped for a uh, an, uh, half an hour or more. And I said, what can I do? I cannot wait there uh, almost a, a, an hour or so. I have to go somewhere and sit or do something. Despite I was tired and suffering from my back, I couldn't help going to one of the, at the time I went earlier on, it was one of the biggest supermarket spirits wise. Now the choice was narrowed a lot. I was disappointed first. And then I saw the glass shelves with the, you know, closed. And what did I see? Sorry, this, <laughs> the reawakening, and this with a super bargain on it. So I said, what, what do I do? I, it's the last time probably I can afford those with that huge bargain. Uh, because probably nobody wanted them. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going for it. Because I had a sample of this and I know it's good. It's quite good. I think I rated it 91. Where, of course, I rated higher, uh, not of course, but I rated higher the 25 years old Glen Scotia. But the price is not the same, right? So, pretty good, pretty nice uh, Glen Scotia. So I think I'm going to probably finish it because, uh, again, I'm crushing other live shows tonight. So I'm probably finish it now uh, and see if I can maybe jump in a uh, Scotch Down Under live show. I don't know. Uh, as we're uh, now a bit like pals and uh, otherwise go to the Charismatic Voice live show. I don't know. Cheers, everyone. There's something undefined in this, which is beautiful. It's about the time that is on the cask and how the things have been beautifully melted together in the um, in the uh, idea of making this go uh, the same way in one complex note composed of floral fruity when i say fruity orchid fruit citrus fruit 
vanilla on the background, sweet spices, slightly minty notes, very, very tiny because it's only one year of finishing uh, dried fruits notes from the olive or so. Uh, but this is beautiful. Okay. Um, I think it's time now to say uh, maybe goodbye and thank you. Uh, so again, you're going to see other videos soon. I don't know when exactly, so I, I'm sorry. Um, I have a lot of French and uh, Canadian, Scottish, etc. Et whiskies to try. Um, they're going to be reviewed uh, when I can. So please stay tuned. And again, there's a lot of things already online. So please check out what has already been done uh, in this channel. You'll probably find something interesting for you, whether it's about blending, it's about cast finishing, about ethics in, in reviewing, about whiskies of the year, uh, different kinds of... Uh, questions about uh, how the whiskey is done, how to blend, etc. So please have a look in the, what we say, the back catalog, over 100 videos. And also, yeah, I forgot to say thank you so much because I'm now over 500 subs and I really appreciate your support. So uh, thanks again and see you soon. Bye-bye.